Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. To go find you go back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Today I'm going to be reacting to the whole of Christianity and the Bible destroyed by Amidat. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. In Nadina, in the Allah Islam, most certainly the religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is Islam. If you want a religion other than Islam, so Allah will not accept it from you. From you. And you will be of the losers. Anything else other than Islam? So I said, now the religion of Moses was Islam. The religion of Jesus was Islam. The religion of speech by Muhammad was Islam. It was nothing but Islam. I said, this is the Holy Bible. Right? Yes, this is that Holy Bible. I said, what do you call it? Ya yeah, Sheikh, what do you call this? What would you call it? Injil, yes. That's what they said. I said, what do you call it, you Sudanese? He said, Injil. I said, right. Now I said, now what you do? Come on, come on. First book of the Bible called Genesis. Open it. So they open. Everybody. Got it? Find chapter 19. Got it? He says, got it. I said, verse 30. Got it? He says, got it. I said, right. Read. So he reads two verses. I said, next one. Come, read, read. Continue. Continue. That's Injil. Shh. You're getting horrified. Wallah. It is so easy to deal with the enemy. This book here. This is the scud missile he's throwing at you, pushing it down your throat. You now reverse this, send it back to him. And I tell you, this few, I gave them few references. Genesis chapter 19, verse 30 onwards. It speaks about Lut salam and his two daughters. Night after night they seduce the father and they collect, they have sex with the father and they beget bastard children from the father. Lut salam. Astaghfirullah. Chapter 35, verse 22. I said, open, see. Right. Read it. Reuben, one of the sons of Yaqub salam, he go and cohibits with his mother on the roof. Genesis, still first book. Don't go far, man. Chapter 38, read, verse 15 or so onwards. Judah, the father of the Jewish race, he goes and commits incest with his daughter-in-law by the roadside and begets bastard children from her. This is the Holy Bible. Not only that, but Allah Ta'ala himself, what he does to Ibrahim's wife, Sarah. You want me to read it? You want to hear what Allah does to her? Just listen. This is the Holy Bible I'm reading to you. You don't know, so therefore they push it down your throat. I want to arm our people. I said, look man, once you know what this guy is offering you, you will know how to defend yourself. And that guy will run for life. He comes to your house, want to talk about the Bible. He said, you know, what does the Quran say about uh, uh, the Yawm al Qiyamah? Will it be established here or somewhere in the heavens? What does your Quran say? Look, bulk of us, we know nothing. Wallah, we know nothing. One third of the Quran speaks about heaven, hell and hereafter. How many of us are equipped? Do you know what, the, what, where will this earth, the new world will be established? Where? Here or there in heaven? Where? What does the Quran say? I said, look, my brothers, don't enter into that. Admit it that I don't know. Even me. I said, look, I don't know. If you want to know, go to Sheikh Abbas or go to my Sheikh or Imam. He will tell you, I don't know. I'm ashamed. I'm a Muslim. I don't know. But I take it. You know your Bible. He's carrying it. I said, of course. No Christian coming with a Bible with him say, no, he doesn't say, what the hell are you coming and asking me about the Quran? You don't know your own Bible, you don't talk to me about the Quran? He says, yes, of course. I say, can I have a look? Take the Bible, open Genesis chapter 19, verse 30, ask him to read it. And please explain to me what these daughters are doing to the father. Huh? Genesis chapter 35, verse 22, he says, look what the son is doing to his mother. Huh? What this father-in-law is doing to his daughter-in-law by the roadside. That guy will never darken your door. And he'll be so terrified of Muslims. He's Muslims, leave him alone. Let's look for a Hindu or a Buddhist. He'll never come to your door. I said about God. Allah wa ta'ala, astaghfirullah. Let's see what he does to, to Sarah. What he does. I'm only reading, you know, to save time. I don't want to call one of you to come and read. But I'm reading Genesis chapter 21. Verse 1. Don't go far. Genesis, first book of the Bible. Chapter 21, ayah number 1. And the Lord, Lord means God, Rabb. And the Lord visited Sarah, like you go and visit your girlfriend. Hmm? Then I'm reading. And the Lord visited Sarah, and as he had said. 
He had promised us that I'm going to come and see you again, you know, next year, this time. This is a long story, a few chapters before you learn that Allah, Allah bari ta'ala, astaghfirullah, and two angels came to visit Ibrahim on the way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. They came to visit him. So he was sitting, standing outside a tree, uh, under a tree, and he sees these three persons coming. So he's very happy, visitors coming, you know, in the desert, his house, lonely person, <laughs> and then he, he says, wash your feet, and he f sacrificed a fatted calf, and he told his wife, gave her some flour, and says, with some uh, butter, make some buns, and they said, prepare the table. So they prepared the table. They sat down to eat. And Allah and the two angels, they ate. The buns and the beef. They add. Allah tells in the Quran almost the identical story, but it says that three angels came. And Ibrahim Alaihissalam did all this. And they sat down to eat. And when they sat down to eat, like Ibrahim Alaihissalam would say, Bismillah, get started. So everybody around the table starts eating except the three. They are just watching, staring at Ibrahim Alaihissalam and the others. And Ibrahim Alaihissalam is terrified. You come to my house, I prepare the table. And you're not eating, you must have some evil intention. Maybe to abduct my wife or to kill me, steal my flock. What? Why did you come? He's terrified. So the angels apprehend the fear. So they say, we are the angels of the Lord, and this is not our nourishment. That's what the Quran says. The Bible says, not three angels, it's the two angels and God. They came, these three, and they all act. Broil fish and honeycomb like, you know. <laughs> now, he's telling Ibrahim, he says, you know, in the Bible, he says, this Sarah, woman of yours. I'm going to also give her a son. And Sarah is listening from behind the tent. So she giggles, laughs. <laughs> Me, an old woman and this husband of mine also finished our old crop. What am I going to have a son? So she laughs. So the Lord says, God, God says, you laughed. He says, no, I didn't. He says, yes, you did. Argument between Allah and Sarah. So he said, look, next year, this time, I'm going to come along and give you this child that I promised you. Nine months time. So he comes after nine months. This is now nine months time. He comes, returns. Allah comes again. Astaghfirullah. He comes. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. He did to her what he had spoken. Said, I'll do to you. He did it. And Sarah conceived. Instead of Lord and Sarah, let's talk about Samson and Delilah. And Samson visited Delilah. Look, you'll be easier for you to swallow. The Christian. Or Swagat visited Murphy. Barbara Murphy. <laughs> and Swagat visited Murphy. As he had said. And Swagat did unto uh, Murphy as he had spoken. And Murphy conceived. She became pregnant. What did Swagat do to Murphy? What did he do? This is what the Lord is doing. This is the Holy Bible. I have sinned against you, my Lord. And I would ask that your precious blood would wash and cleanse every stain until it is in the seas of God's forgetfulness. You know that? And you called it Injil. You said Injil, this Injil? <laughs> huh? And there's so many other things, Wallah. Man, I want to arm you people. Don't be punching bags for people. They come and practice on you. They come and shit on your head. Learn to defend yourself and turn the tables. And with nothing, you don't have to use the Quran. Don't take the Quran. It's too holy. Let it lie on the shelf on the top. It's too sacred to bring into the battle. Use his own book. And Allah is telling you, Kul hatu burhanakum. Anything the guy claims, man, asking for this Burhan. He's produced it for you in 2,000 different languages. 11 for you Arabs alone. That means Allah expects you to analyze it. So once you analyze it, not to swallow it. He's asking you to demand proof. When proof is produced, what do you do? You analyze it. And once you analyze it, you find he is a sitting target, sitting duck for you. Instead of you at the moment you are for him. If you have ever asked any Christian who wrote the Bible, they would probably tell you God wrote the Bible or all the writers were divinely inspired by God. The Bible has about 40 authors and some authors are unknown, like the author of the book of Hebrews is unknown. The so-called divinely inspired holy book 
has many obscene stories and verses that are not befitting to be from God. Sheikh Didat only mentioned a few from the many obscene stories and instances in the Bible. We want Christians to explain what moral lessons we learn from the following verses in the Bible. Father had sex with his two biological daughters, Lot and his two daughters. Son had sex with his mother, Reuben, the son of Jacob and his mother. Father-in-law had sex with his daughter-in-law, thinking she was a harlot, Judah and his daughter-in-law Tamar. Brother rapes his sister. Tamar is raped by her half-brother Amnon, King David's children. Another son of King David had sex with his father's concubine. These are just a few from the many obscene cases of incest and rape in the Bible, which Christians claim were all inspired by God. What are the moral lessons we learn from these stories recorded in the Bible? In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 2, we read, A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Now let's read about the genealogy of Jesus Christ from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. And Judah begat Phares and Zarah of Tamar, and Phares begat Esrom, and Esrom begat Aram. We have read previously from the book of Genesis chapter 38 that Judah committed incest with his daughter-in-law Tamar. They begot bastard children Phares and Zara, who are now mentioned as part of the genealogy of Jesus Christ as his great grandparents. <laughs> Uh, interesting video I was asking myself this question and I believe I asked it last time for the sake of us having a conversation um, how did the world start out by God creating Adam and Eve how, where did the other populations come from? Because, I'm a, because Adam and Eve had children who later married each other to reproduce more and the cycle went on. So, um, of course, in this day and age, I'll be among the, the people that are frowning upon such. And um, But then where are we going with this? I'm trying to understand something here. Because I believe some practicing Muslims, and I said this in my last video, actually marry within the family. Isn't that still incest? Whether it's your cousin, whether it's your what, it's still incest. So what about those Muslims, you know? And other tribes in the world are still practicing this thing of marrying within your own family and the generations to come do the same thing. So what's the perfect thing to do? Otherwise, I'd love to ask for these to be in the Bible. What was the message that God was trying to give us here? It's something I'm trying to understand. So if anyone has the answer to that, please comment down below. I love to read your responses. I love listening to what you have to say. I'll be glad. And if there's anything you want me to react to, make sure to give me the name or the link down below and I'll be more than glad to react to it. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.